And we're now going to be joined by the spokesperson of the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission, Dr. Winston Kasho. Dr. Kasho, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the program. Hi, good afternoon, Carmina, and good afternoon to all your listeners and viewers. All right, we just heard from Congressman Benny Abante there saying that there's a good amount of corruption within the Bureau of Immigration. We're going to touch on that in a bit. But first, the president congratulating law enforcement agencies who made the arrest possible. The fugitive arrested early this morning in Indonesia. Tell us how it all went down. Dr. Kasho. Well, we've always been in coordination with uh, well, uh, first of all, there is an interagency task group uh, with regards to Pogo, and one of the agencies that uh, that are with us, that is with us, is the Bureau of Immigration. So they have been tasked since a few weeks ago when it was made known that Alice Ku was able to leave the Philippines is in quarantine Jakarta. They were tasked to primarily be on the 24/7 lookout for her. So I would like to commend, I would like to give the credit to the Bureau of Immigration because really they'd, be, uh, they'd been in constant, uh, uh, they've been constantly in touch with their immigration counterparts in Indonesia. Now, how did this happen? Uh, when the uh, immigration commissioner, Norman Tansinko, coordinated with his counterparts in Indonesia, they were able to inform him that they already have a positive, uh, a positive uh, eyeball, meaning to say a, a face-to-face -face encounter with Alice Guo. So they immediately effected the arrest. I mean, by day, Indonesia effected the arrest upon the request of the Philippine Immigration Authorities. Mm -hmm. This uh, happened around, I'm not quite sure if it was 11.30 or 1.30. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's 11.30 last night or 1.30 this morning. And we were informed as early as 4 a.m., that she was already in custody of uh, the uh, Jatanras Mabes uh, police in Indonesia. So she's, th she's in that particular uh, police station. So we're just uh, waiting for the instruction from the Secretary of Justice when the Bureau of Immigration can redeploy its team to go back to Jakarta to retrieve the person of Guwa Ping. But this shouldn't take long, right? When you compare no, it to Cassandra Lee Ong and um, Sheila Guo, it happened in less than 24 hours. Should we expect the same with Alice Guo? Well, I would defer that question to the Secretary of Justice. But uh, given what we had, uh, given our experience with regards to uh, Sheila and uh, Cassie, mm. I expect that you would have her back. We should have her back by, by the end of today or at the very earliest tonight. Dr. Kasho, when did you know that an apprehension was imminent? Uh, around 3.30 this morning, uh, we received communication from our counterpart in Indonesia that they had a positive eyeball on Alex Guo. Mm -hmm. But uh, we kept a very tight lead on the information until such time that they actually had her in their custody. Mm -hmm. When did you get informed that she was actually in Tanjarang, Indonesia? Uh, with regards to the particular information, only early this morning also. Oh, okay. Uh, what we had, what we were, what, the information that we were given uh, up until last two days ago was that she was in the general vicinity of the area where she was caught. But in the actual location, <clears throat> apartment, villa address, we didn't get that until this early morning only. Mm -hmm. Can you give us more details as to the place where she was apprehended, that apartment, that villa? Um, what's it known for? Where is it, um, where is it located? Um, how long has she been there? If you have any details. Uh, Carmina, those information we don't have in our, dis in our, in our dis uh, disposal yet. Mm -hmm. We'd have to wait for the official report coming from our Indonesian counterparts that would be forwarded to the Bureau of Immigration. Mm. And once they have that, that would be submitted to the Executive Secretary. And likewise, he would subsequently admi uh, submit that to the President. What about Wesley Go? Anything on him? Um, we have information on him. Unfortunately, we could not disclose uh, the information that we have received in relation to Wesley. Again, uh, please indulge us until such time that we're able to get him in our physical custody. Mm, we hear you. Um, do you have any information about what Alice Goh has told Indonesian authorities? Um, has she contacted anyone? Um, any conversation between Alice Goh and the Indonesian authorities that you can share to the public? Dr. Kasho. 
none so far. Yes, she already uh, there is already a uh, preliminary report in relation to some information that she has conveyed to the Indonesian people, uh, police who, call, who have her in custody. But then again, until such time that the report is official, we could not possibly disclose that yet. Was she alone when the apprehension happened? Apparently, yes. Apparently, yes. Uh, what we could confirm is she has been hopping from one place to the next. Uh, we have been informed that uh, she has not been leaving. She has been staying in a particular hotel or villa at the most two days at any given time. No more. Do Indonesia, have, have the Indonesian authorities as well shared anything with you with regard to the money trail, how she's able to spend um, for um, these, um, these uh, either hotels or villas that she's been staying at since she fled the country? This is, pre this is very preliminary, uh, Carmina. We'd have to wait for the official report. But uh, I assure the Philippine public that once we submitted, once all of the agencies have uh, submitted our report to the executive secretary and to the president, uh, the public would know. In fact, I was going to ask you, what was that call about? <laughs> uh, I could not possibly disclose because this is a developing, uh, uh, it's a developing issue that hmm. we need to resolve in relation to getting her back to the Philippines ASAP. So it was about Alice Goh? Uh, yeah, it was about Alice Goh. But hmm. uh, uh, we're just ironing out some details and we'll coordinate with the Department of Justice and the Bureau of Immigration on how to proceed with, with her repatriation to the Philippines. Any roadblocks that you're seeing here? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, we'd have to move fast. So we're moving very fast to make sure that she'll be returned to the Philippines. Hopefully within a day, as, as quickly as what we did with Tassie and Sheila. All right. Um, a while ago, at the start of the interview, you did say um, that you give the credit to the Bureau of Immigration um, uh, when you talk about the arrest of Alice Go. But the fact remains, Dr. Castro, that she was able to flee. And... Um, we also heard from Congressman Benny Abante there saying that there's a good amount of corruption in the Bureau of Immigration, um, which led to her fleeing the country. I know you're looking into this as well. What can you tell us about uh, who's responsible Carmina, for letting her go? As of go today, ahead. Today, we have not found any evidence either way with regards to any possible uh, liability as far as the Bureau of Immigration is concerned. Uh, bear in mind that we have no evidence that she went through our immigration process, be it through the seaports or the airports. So uh, we're looking at the possibility that she did get out of the Philippines as uh, uh, ba uh, basing on the uh, testimony of Sheila, that she got out of the Philippines using uh, ferries, using uh, sea vessels. Now, those sea vessels do not necessarily go through uh, the immigration. Bear in mind that you have, we've got a very porous and wide uh, water, uh, waterways in the Philippines. So chances are there was no immigration personnel who accommodated or facilitated her getting out to the Philippines. But then again, uh, that was the testimony of Sheila. We'd have to listen to the testimony of Alice when she returned to the Philippines mm -hmm. and faces the Senate and or the House. But I am 100% certain that in this particular retrieval, repatriation, possible repatriation of Alice, this is the work, the hard work of the people from the Bureau of Immigration. Mm. Which now brings the focus on the possible collusion of local government officials that led to her, um, uh, that, that allowed her to, to flee the country, Dr. Castro? Yes. We'd have to look at that because uh, based on the testimony of Sheila, they went, up to, they went out to the Philippines via a private port. So private ports, municipal ports, fishing ports, whatever ports that may be, any private port would still be within the uh, jurisdiction of the local government units and or uh marina uh philippine ports authority so we'd have to take a look at these two possibilities but we are 100 percent certain as the president said many times that there is uh it is very it is 100 percent certain that someone somewhere 
facilitated the escape of Alice Guo from the Philippines. We just have to unmask them. Mm. We've got leads. The pre as the president told the media, he, we've got leads. All agencies of government have leads. But until, and, and, until such time that we have something justiciable or something that would stand in court, uh, we could not possibly disclose them yet. Mm. And we all know this, um, Dr. Casho, the arrest of Alice Guo, it may be, uh, you know, a big development, but make no mistake about it. She's just one of the many moving parts in a massive syndicate. Would you agree, uh, Dr. Kasho? Yes, ma'am. I do agree. She's, in fact, she's not the tip of the iceberg. She's, uh, she's a very, uh, it's beginning to appear now that she's a very small player in this transnational organi crime criminal organization that uh, basically facilitated the entry of this money laundering and scamming activities in the Philippines. Mm. Which brings us to the Pogo scam hub uh, that was recently raided in Cebu. Does this have any connection um, with the Pogos in Tarlac, in Pampanga? Do we already know who owns it? Uh, as far as the Pogo in Lapu Lapu City is concerned, yes. Uh, according to the affidavits, according to the testimony, initial interviews that we conducted with the Filipinas and some of the Indonesian nationals uh, who were rescued and or arrested in Lapu-Lapu, they actually escaped from uh, Porak Pampanga uh, in one of the testimonies of uh, the Filipina uh, detainee. She told us that someone tipped uh, their uh, bosses to escape uh, Bamba, I don't know, Porak. So apparently they received information as early as June 3, a day prior to the initial serving of the search warrant. Mm. Remember, Carmina, uh, we obtained a search warrant on June 4 from one of the courts in Malos, Balacan. So that was the initial warrant. We served that around 6 p.m. of June 4. But apparently they already got information that June th as early as June 3, that we were going to operate in Pora. Wow. So somebody leaked, uh, somebody informed them that we were coming. Mm. Which brings my, to my, my final question for you today, uh, Dr. Kasha, as you follow the trail, how high have you gone in terms of the bureaucracy? Um, Carmina, I hope you forgive me for not disclosing that yet. In as much as, uh, yes, there are some individuals who are, uh, who may be, uh, let me rephrase my statement. <laughs> We've got enough evidence mm. to file against certain individuals. Now, how high up? Uh, we'd leave that first to the Department of Justice. Once we file the cases in relation to Porak. Now, are there other officials that were looking at? Uh, yes, yes. How high up? Uh, we leave that to the executive secretary and or the president to disclose once we file the necessary charges. And that's coming? That's coming yes, soon? Ma uh, yes, ma'am. All right. We're going to have to leave it at that. Dr. Winston Kasha, their spokesperson of the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission. Always appreciate your insights. Always appreciate you taking our call. Thanks again. Thank you, Carmina. Good afternoon. Take care.